This video is about the question why a mechanical wristwatch movement is still state of the art, is still top notch, measured by today's standards. Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim. Very interesting topic. This question, why is it still top notch? Is this even possible? Because we all are, I think, in this mindset that we have something very old and very retro and very vintage when we handle a mechanical wristwatch. The opposite is true. First, now we must understand the connection between beat rate of a caliber and the time and the hands. Because in every watch review you hear something like, this is an oscillator SW200, operates at 28,800 beats. And all the question, what does that mean? And where's the connection to the, to the actual hands that display the time? And it's very simple. You can imagine the main component, the balance wheel, as a pendulum. A pendulum goes back and forth and every time it touches a point zero, let's call it, it releases a tiny fraction of energy to another wheel, which powers then the hands, is connected to the hands. And that's the idea. So it goes back and forth and every time it hits point zero, a well-determined and, and precise amount of energy is released, escapes into the next wheel and that powers then the hands. And now we can imagine why it is important that this pendulum is very precise, not slow and then suddenly very fast or somewhat wobbly. No, it has to be super precise. And in our case, 28,800 beats, it touches 0 0.0 28,800 times. That's the idea. And now let's speak about tolerances. Let's speak about performance with a very simple case. We Again, we take our Silita SW200, which is the backbone, the workhorse of the watch industry with a beat rate of 28,800. And we want a very precise watch. We want that movement regulated to plus minus three seconds a day. So very precise watch, which absolutely is possible. And we want that the caliber, that the watch movement um, delivers this performance the entire day, 24 hours with that great precision. So all we have to do now is to take our 28,800, we have to multiply this number by 24, with 24 hours, right? And then we end up with a very big number with 691,200 beats and every single beat is necessary to maintain that precision during the day. And now we can figure out the tolerances. Now we can figure out the maximum of deviation we are willing to accept to reach this precision. And we can state this tolerance in percent and in seconds and in percent it's 0.0035% deviation or tolerance. And in seconds it's 4 microseconds. So when we divide our second in one million parts, then four of these parts, this is our tolerance. And I think now we all feel a bit amazed and a bit, a bit, a bit stunned by this sort of accuracy and in fact with good reason because you will have a hard time to find another device on planet earth with that great precision a mechanical device of course um, there are very very few examples of mechanical machinery that reaches this this amount of precision you can think about a let's say a scale in a laboratory so a very advanced and fine scale but you don't shake it around you don't beat it, you don't have any, you don't expose it to direct sunlight, you don't expose it to cold, you don't bring it out into the rain, you don't expose it to, to different um, air pressure scenarios. The thing is just on a table in a very controlled environment and there it can fulfill its duty. The wristwatch is a completely different story. It is exposed to shock, to cold, to heat. We, I mean, we all know this. And despite that, it delivers this great accuracy. And this is the achievement. This is the main achievement. Or you can think about a gyroscope in a rocket that makes it possible to steer, to navigate that rocket through space. And so, same precision. And so I think this is a nice, nice thought with that we have something as nearly as advanced as a gyroscope on our wrist, which yeah, works with a precision that is still in 2025, a very, very big achievement. And this even enhanced by the miniaturization. I think we all have a bit of, or we have a feeling for the, 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 the achievement to build something that small, that robust, that precise. And that then also in combination with an automatic winding mechanism, which uh, brings us very close to a perpetual mobile, so the perpetual motion machine, which is of course crazy because I think we all have the experience or the feeling that you, when you have to wind a mechanical machine, 
then you need a lot of energy to wind it. And here you have just your arm. The, the gentle movement of your arm winds your watch. This brings us, as said, very close to a perpetual mobile, which is super precise, super small, super robust. And I think this all together is uh, the reason why wristwatches, mechanical wristwatches are still a very, very fascinating topic. And now I'd like to show you the calculations behind this little speech here. I mixed it with calming music so that nobody has to freak out when we think about math and school. And again, you don't have to do these calculations yourself, of course, to value the great achievement of a watch catalog. Okay, welcome back. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you had this, this promised eye-opener. For me personally, this was a very valuable video, I must say, because often we have the feeling or often we think we understand something entirely and then you try to explain it and you cannot explain it in a, in a proper way. And so I had to do a lot of research and calculations with a little help from, from the artificial intelligence, of course. But I learned a lot. I had my fun. All right, that's for this video. Please visit casebackwatches.com where you find great leather items for wristwatches, but also belts and wallets made also with great precision, but although not, not with four microseconds precision, I have to, I have to admit that. And so casebackwatches.com. And that's all for this episode. So thank you very much for your attention and until next time.